Well, what would you do if you suddenly had a whole lot of extra money? That's the situation the state of Minnesota finds itself in with a $1.3 billion surplus. The argument over what to do with the surplus is expected to dominate the legislative session. Democratic House members want to spend half a billion dollars of the surplus on more affordable daycare spots and 25,000 one-time scholarships for a year of pre-kindergarten. He's the powerful Minnesota House Speaker who is championing that proposal. And House Speaker Melissa Hortman joins us right now. Thank you so much for coming in. Good morning. All right. This would be one-time spending. You have presented this argument several times as saying you're only three once. Go, go into detail. I think we can get that, but go into detail about that. Sure. When you look at the state's $1.3 billion surplus, we don't expect that uh, surplus to be ongoing into the future. We, in fact, know in the next two years we might face some tough economic headwinds. So knowing that we have $1.3 billion right now, the question is where can we make the most difference? And you are only three once. And the difference we make in a three-year-old's life in the year when they are three will carry with them for the rest of their life. So it would be wonderful if we could make a commitment to all the three-year-olds in Minnesota, this year's three-year-olds, next year's three-year-olds. But just because we can't make that commitment to next year's three-year-olds, we don't know yet that we'll have the money to do that, doesn't mean we should miss this opportunity in the lives of so many Minnesota children. Right. You, you had a very compelling case at the news conference that I was at uh, of a young family, the, the mom, middle-class family in Plymouth, the dad had PTSD from his service in the Marine Corps, and they could no longer afford their child's pre-K, and they were able to get one of these grants. This sounds like this would affect not just super low income people, but people who are middle class as well. Well, that's right. That mom made the case that one of the most difficult things for parents to pay for is college. But in college, kids can qualify for scholarships. And when you look at early education and the cost being similar to college, it's important that we have scholarships out there that can make a big difference for families who need them. All right. You also had um, a provider from Ada who talked about only having four spots for infants in all of Ada, which serves a larger rural area around there. Is that something that's going on around the state and are you hoping, I mean, that really is a crisis for families. Well, absolutely. In Minnesota, we have a very high labor participation rate. A lot of families, both mom and dad, go to work. And so we have really a child care crisis. Not only are there not enough spots, but they're not affordable for families. And then further, the people who are working in those very important jobs aren't making enough money. So it's worthy of a lot of attention from the Minnesota legislature this year. All right, and we, we expect to have uh, Republican leaders on this program in upcoming weeks. They're talking about tax cuts someplace you're not going. Let, let me ask you, House uh, Democrats are also talking about an enormous bonding bill of three plus billion dollars. Where are you on that? This is money you would borrow for infrastructure projects at a time when interest rates are actually very, very good for the state of Minnesota. Well, that's right. You know, cities and counties have made requests more than five billion dollars. There is a huge unmet need for our wastewater treatment plants, our local roads and bridges, higher education institution buildings. So $3.5 billion sounds like a lot of money, but is well within the state's debt guidelines. And when you think about your house, if your roof starts to fail and you have to take out a loan and it's $17,000 or $40,000, sounds like a lot of money. But if you don't fix your roof, the potential damage to your house is much, much greater. So while there is a cost of making investments, there's also a cost to failing to make investments. And as long as we're looking at responsible debt limits, then I think we have to do the largest bill we can afford. Right, and Minnesota also has another $2 billion. This is a separate $2 billion in a rainy day fund. Minnesota is, is in really very good financial state, uh, shape at this point. I want to ask you about gun control measures. You're actually, before the show, expressed some optimism that maybe this year something could happen. Tell us about that. You would hope so. You know, I read, uh, and I think just this morning's uh, Star Tribune, it was online, so I'm not sure if it was today or, or earlier. Um, in Florida, since they passed the red flag law with a Republican House, a Republican Senate, a Republican governor, they have had 3,500 incidents where law enforcement has been able to use the law to take action where someone has expressed a threat to themselves or to other people. We see this red flag provision making a difference most significantly in gun suicides. So the, the proposals that House Democrats are putting on the table are ones that have been proven to be effective and that have passed and been enacted into law in Republican-led states. All right. Well, Speaker Melissa Hortman, thank you so much for coming in. We certainly appreciate your time. We'll see you at the legislature. Thanks. Nice right. to see you.